Yeah. So this interview really is about how you can give your advice and your insights on how it's like to be a DJ. All right, cool. So I've got a few questions for you here. So what I'm going to say now is I'm going to ask you <laughs> to summarise the highlights of your life so far in 30 seconds, and only you know it. Hell. Okay. So rather than doing a live story in five hours, do the highlights in 30 seconds from when you were born to this current moment in time. Wow. In 30 seconds. Are you okay. ready? I'll give you about five seconds to have a think now. I just pick moments. Yes. Right. Um, you, you got hit from a series of moments. Tell us what they were. Okay, so, is that all right. right? So, I'm absolutely yes. shy with iPhones. All right, nice. No, locks in the sun. <laughs> right, 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Well, going through school wasn't much, to be honest. I started getting into music production, um, and, you know, it was good that people were liking it. When I was 18, I booked on my flight to Magaluf. Um, couldn't find any DJ work. Managed to find DJ work. Then I got off the gig in Bulgaria. A big highlight of that was like just coming into a resort, 18-year-old kids just seeing yourself on billboards and stuff. Then from Bulgaria, I went back to Magaluf in a, in a really good club, DJing with my idols. And then I got scouted, going to Ibiza, producing, and then that's it. Nice. <laughs> that's all I can do, man. Uh, yeah, decent. Okay, that's good summary, that. All right. That's decent, nice. So, so, yeah, you've done a summary of your life in 30 seconds. Pretty good, by the way. Cheers. Flying wasn't mentioned. What happened to flying? Oh well, in the context of DJing, uh, <laughs> right. but I mean, flying's a big, a big deal for me. It okay. really is. Um, but as I said, that's something I keep separate to music. Right. Um, they will intertwine in the future. I okay. Think. Sweet. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. So yeah. So what's your situation at the moment? Where are you resident anywhere? I know this, yeah. but I'm just asking now, obviously. All oh, right. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So have you got any tracks coming out? What's your situation right now? Um. So yeah, I've currently got uh, a residency in Manchester. In fifth, I got a few other residencies as well. Fifth um, Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Yeah. Then I got fifth. Yeah. Um, and then aside from that, I'll be doing one-off gigs uh, wherever I sort of get booked to play. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much DJ side. In the summers, I go to Bangalore. Nice. Um, well, that's what I'm going to do this summer, and maybe some other resort as well, back and forth. Um, I'll be there as well, producing, and I'll be DJing in Boomerang this summer. I was in the same place you went to last year. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I'll be coming back for a second year. Yeah. Um, but as I said, I usually go around, you know, a lot of different resorts. You know, I've done Bulgaria as well, which is sick. And this is what this is all about, just getting a lot of new content up there, a lot of new music. Um, <laughs> it. Hopefully it's going to sound good. And yeah. you should be expecting some tracks to come out maybe within the next few months. So, um, what's your favourite genre of music? Obviously you do a lot of dance and house and that, and you yeah. do minimal house. But as I've seen on your trailer, that's quite sort of bouncing. Yeah, um, honestly, I got asked this in an interview the other day, and I just can't pick a favourite genre. I, yeah. I, I, I genuinely can't. I love music too much to... You know, because it's so diverse and it's the genres converge in ways that we can't really identify them. You yeah. know, they could be a track which sounds a bit like this, but it's actually this. Um, true, yeah. You look to my YouTube playlist. Yeah. I'm listening to Madonna, Roy Orbison, you know, Enrico Enrico Sangliano, yeah. Techno. It's a just oh a God. complete spectrum. Like Debussy, right. com- complete spectrum. So as I said, there's no genre, but uh, in terms of what I produce, it is centered on house music, and I'm really into. Uh, progressive, minimal techno at the moment, which is good. Minimal techno, okay, cool. What's your next track going to be like? Uh, well, my next track and my next release, because I've got... Your next release? The next, next release. one that's going to be publicly available? So, I don't know exactly what's happening with it yet. I think it's going to be an EP, so there's going to be two tracks coming out okay. at the same time. Cool. Uh, it's a bit of a tech house track. I can give you a little preview if you want. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I'll, that's a very short preview, though, because okay. I'm not really... Super. How many seconds? Ten? Uh, five. Up to you if you want to give it a little bit. Ten seconds, okay. it's fine. Um, wait, this is the best bit. Yeah, I'll have to search for it. You have to do this, I've gone. No, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, this will be cut. Uh, okay. This is the... Show you 
hope that the bass go is audible on this podcast. And yeah. Well, yeah. Um, as I, I say, there was a, there was a lot of sort of. Good that. Yeah, there was a lot of refinement. Uh, that's that's not even mastered yet. So. Wow. So um, on a sort of side note, obviously you've got the flying on the side. Yeah. Has this always been your dream, or what's the intertwine? What's the sort of uh, connection with the flying side? Well, okay, yeah. Um, so like all through school, I wanted to be a pilot. That was my yeah. main ambition since since I was a really young kid, um, and it was all I could ever see myself doing. And then I sort of dabbled in music production, and one thing led to another, and I didn't end up taking the aviation career path. But yeah. My love of flying never really died. So you still got it now, you still sort of obsessed? Yeah, yeah, and you know, when I got back to university and I was able to save a bit, um, yeah, I began flying again, you know, now I'm getting my licence. And I'm hoping that I yeah. can bring flying into what I do as a DJ, you know, yeah. in the future, when I get my PPL. How would you do that? What, what would you do? Like, well, you know... Do you have ideas that you're not going to share? Or? I can share a bit, I can just say, <laughs> you, know, uh, you. you know, there's gigs, and yeah. some gigs are further away than others. Yeah. Why drive? <laughs> you know, fly there, and I think it'd be a pretty fun, cool thing to do because I'm yeah. doing two things that I love. Obviously, yeah. you know, there is ram- ramifications, as you know, as a pilot yourself. Yeah. With air, though, I'm not. I wouldn't be able to drink. I wouldn't be able to, you know, stay up too late and stuff. But... Only five shots maximum. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, five <laughs> shots before the flight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but as I said, so you know, I, I'm really open. That can, that can be an avenue to explore. Okay, cool. So if someone said to you right now, what's it like to be a DJ? You've heard that question a million times. But what's the best response? Saying so not the positives, not the negatives, but a bit of a range. What's it like being a DJ? Uh, the highs are highs and the lows are low. That's pretty much the best way to simplify it. You know, one moment you're on top of the world, and this it is the best feeling ever when you're yeah in in complete you know you're loving life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then on the flip side, you will hit a brick wall or a moment where it all goes pear shaped. Right. Um, and you've just got to deal with it. You know, right, and that's that's the industry. You know, that's yeah, that's life. That's in a lot of different industries, isn't it? Exactly that. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's just not just exclusive to DJing, but with DJing, there, there is a very big range between happiness and very bad sadness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. But other than that, it's the best thing I've ever done. What's a highlight of your life so far as a DJ? Well, so uh, the moment that you can like share. Probably doing the Manchester Academy was was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, when was that? How many years ago? It was a few months ago. It was right. in, I think it was in October, October twenty ninth, I think. I think I remember you posting that actually. Yeah, uh, that's where the video's from. Um, yeah. You know, just I think the the biggest highlight uh, of my life as a DJ so far, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah. I think it was when I got a residency in Bulgaria. Yeah. And I was like an eighteen year old kid. Yeah. I land in this country on the other side of Europe, and there's it's a like, big. What the hell are we doing now? Sort there's of, a yeah. Bi- yeah, there's a big billboard of me. Oh outside God. and I'm just like I I never seen anything like that before like you know and to see that after you know so many years of rejection and, you know yeah. working really hard it sort of felt like a bit like wow okay this is surreal this like, is what it is on yeah and you know it doesn't seem real and you just turn up and you see it and you're like I can't believe it was that worth it based on all the work that you had to do previously? oh absolutely yeah, yeah undoubtedly um as I said the, the the bad moments are minimal compared to the great ones yeah um, in, in reflection, anyway. But, I mean, right. when, when it's happened, it doesn't really seem like it. But yeah, you know. Okay, decent. So, can you tell me a bit more about? Obviously, we covered the highs and lows. Do you have any particular moments of those times that you can relate to now? How you got here? Uh, so, like your first song release, your first X Y Z, first yeah, DJ set. yeah. yeah so, um, like my first label release, I was like seventeen. Well, and it was yeah. a Swedish label. Us. Switzerland, sorry, not Sweden. <laughs> sorry. I was going to yeah, no. uh, Called Off Records. Okay. And it was a track called Vibe. And uh, they sort of reached out to me, asked if they could sign it, and they did. And that was great. Um, and the thing I loved about it as well is because everybody, you know, in school and stuff were like talking, you know, like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, like, yeah. I, you know, wow. that's mad. So at school and you get the sort of label release. Yeah, I mean, like, for me, it was a massive deal back then. I mean, looking back, you know, looking back now, it's, you know, it wasn't as big as I thought it was. <laughs> right. Like, do you know what I mean? But it's, it was well, it gave you motivation, gave you a kick. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, um, and I think when I, I think when I got scouted this summer, sort of in in Maga, yeah, um, on grass to come to Ibiza, yeah. that was just surreal because, you know, these these were actually, these are actually like big big guys. You know what I mean? This yeah. wasn't like a small scale thing. Like, mm-hmm. and I only realised that after I sort of got to Ibiza. Yeah. Um. I sort. I sort of knew a bit, but you I, sort of scared a bit. The scale of it when, of it when yeah. I got there, I was like, "This is like, this is this is serious now." You know, like this isn't like hobby stuff. Um. Yeah. And yeah, it sort of takes you back a bit, but at the same yeah. time, it's, it's it's a really cool thing. 
So how did you get your first DJ gig then? From the moment you practiced uh, in, in your room, God, these decks behind me. I don't really think I should tell anybody this story. <laughs> um, a few people know. Well, all right. I was young. Right. I'm not going to say how old I was, but I wasn't old enough to be doing what I was doing, and I was. I somehow managed to get into a nightclub. Yeah. Using whatever I had to do to get in. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, wasn't the club's fault. It was my fault completely. But I was a kid. Okay. But and uh, wasn't a very good DJ. You know, I'd done a bit here and there, like in parties and stuff, but I didn't have a clue really. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a club DJ, but obviously I started swinging it about. You knew the basics of it. So yeah. Yeah. I knew enough. Yeah. Just about just scraping it, and uh, so I went to the DJ. I was like, I am here. I'm a DJ. I'm local. Like you know, uh, I'm looking for work, and yeah. somehow by some divine miracle, I actually had an opening. Wow. Um, and it was just it was like a decent club, my hometown. Yeah. And so you're on on town. Where, where is that? Obviously, you well, but. Mercantilville. Okay. And then yeah, and then. You know, they offered me a uh, offered me a residency after that one night, uh, my first night. That's mad. So you did one set, and from that, you, the, you got residency. Yeah, it was it was it was on rotation with another DJ who come in out. Yeah. But yeah. it was it, it was the most part of Saturday residency, which was That's, great. How did that feel as soon as like you found out news that you're a resident there? Um. I, pretty cool. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, what? Why? You felt like you don't deserve to be there. Yeah. Because like I, I finished the set and like obviously I won a club DJ. Like I didn't know if it went good or bad. Yeah. Like, Is this good? Did I do good? <laughs> obviously I, I didn't do amazing, but it was good enough. Yeah. Um. So then when I got a text him saying like, can you come? Can you come this Saturday? I was like, oh god, it's like. Yeah. It must be no right and sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Like it was a good laugh, and you know I was getting paid as well, um, which was cool. Because I don't think I've ever done a paid gig before that. No one yeah. would pay to listen to me DJ. So I was like, <laughs> wow, okay, this is special. True. And yeah, it was a good feeling. Decent. How would you compare? Obviously, when you were a kid, you may have dreamed, aside from the planet dream, you dreamed of being a producer and DJ. Like, yeah. And loads of people. You've done that, haven't you? You've played for a, a decent crowd, haven't you? Yeah. What's the biggest crowd you've, you've played to? Uh, I'd say about a thousand. A thousand people? Yeah, about a thousand. And it's just you behind the decks playing to a thousand people? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, yeah. sweet. Decent. So, how does the reality compare to how you go to it? Is it better? Is it worse? Or is it the same? Uh, it's different. Different to what I imagined. Yeah. Like, you know, when I was a, when I was growing up and I imagined myself DJing to what was a big crowd, Yeah. I thought it was going to be, you know, I'm going to play wherever I want, they're going to love it and jump to it. You know, the more you sort of get into it, you realise, you know, you can't just, you've got to really, you know, know your music and sort of know yeah. the crowd. And there's a lot more to it than just playing music. Um, in terms of music production as well, uh, well, I don't know. Is that a hard comparison? It's a hard comparison because I never thought I was going to be mm. anywhere with music. Right. I, I, I never did. I did. I yeah. thought, well, when I first started, I thought I'm going to be famous. Because right. I, thought, I thought my tracks were incredible. Yeah. They were awful. <laughs> but, and then I reached a point where I became very self-critical and that's when all the rejection happened. Right. And I thought, you know, like no one's going to even want my music. I'm just going to keep doing it because I like doing it. But So it's because you kept doing it because you like doing it rather than exactly. get famous. That's the reason you're here you now. You hit the nail on the head. Right. That was it. You know, it was only that I started producing with passion without any end goal that things started to materialize. So this is why now I don't have any goals whatsoever. A lot of people do have goals, but when you make goals and you make plans, you kind of set yourself up for a, a possible disappointment. Yeah. Do everything with passion and love and then... What any, do you want to do with it? And yeah. people who like it come to you sort of thing. Anything, so. that, yeah, anything that comes with it then is a, bit, a bonus, you know? Yeah. And like, that's, that's what this was. And... Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Pretty well summarise that. Yeah. So, would you say, talk, talking about goals and where you are now, would you say you've made it as a DJ and producer? Or? Oh, no, no, definitely no. not. Far, far from. Yeah. I'm like, it, you know, I'm, I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not planning. You know, I've not got a particular vision in my mind of where I want to be, really. Right. Um, but if, if you were to tell me that like, this is as good as it gets, I wouldn't be happy. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? I'd be yeah, like, well, like, no, you know, like. Yeah. You want to hit higher highs than you've hit so far? Yeah, of course. And that's where it is. You know, it's yeah. like it's like it's kind of like a drug. Yeah. You know, I've like I've done gigs which I thought I'd never do, but and then when I've done them, there was a feeling of like that's just sick, and then I was just like, right, well, I want to do something better now, and then that's but, it. Yeah. It's, and it will never stop. So is it your mindset that you want more like progression? Yeah. Some people are fine like with what they're doing at the moment. Yeah. But are you? Can you not do that? You I, I, I'm not able to do it. No. Yeah. Uh, it's the same with everything in life. Yeah. Yeah, everything. Like, this is why it takes me ages to finish tracks because I'm never happy. I'm never satisfied with you anything. Want more, you always think you can like, do. Yeah. My, like, my, for example, my biggest goal was to get my NPPL. Yeah. Which is the National Pirates Pirates Licence. Yeah. Um, 
and that's all I wanted. And I was like, if I get that, I'm going to be so happy. And now I've nearly got it. I'm like, well, now I want my PPL. And then when I get my PPL, right. I'm going to want my CPL. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to want my instructor's license just for the safety. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, that's never going to stop. And I sort of realise that now. Yeah. So I may as well just embrace it and just keep trying, I guess. But uh, well, do you, do you get a, is it is it like the kick that you get from su- from succeeding at the next thing you push yourself to, or what what yeah. keeps you going? Um, well, it's like if you if you do something and yeah. you get you get that kick as it is. Yeah. And then you know that's if that kick's all you're going to get, the kick will become boring. Yeah. After a very short amount of time, and I get bored really fast with anything. So, like it's just finding the next best thing. Okay. And it's it's a bad mentality to have. Honestly, it can be a very bad mentality to have in terms of you know personal stuff. Yeah. It's you know. Like you're looking at what you haven't done rather than what you have done. Yeah. In order to sort of try and push yourself there. Yeah, because because right. like you know, there's always just complete self criticism in yeah. everything, and I love it. <laughs> I, I I I love being the way I am because, like, I know I'm just never going to be like doing nothing. I guess I don't know. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It's not like, like not that, it's just, I, I'd rather be like this than you know satisfied and content with life. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that that's fair enough. So. Yeah. What would you would you advise people to be like like that or not if people want to get to where you're? No, of course not. I mean, absolutely not. Uh, this is just my mentality. You know, okay. th- whatever works for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're a DJ and you've got a goal and you've got a vision and you've got a path and then you reach it, you know, yeah. and you don't want to do that's fine. You know, you've smashed it. You've done it. Yeah. I just I just physically can't. <laughs> like I just I will never be happy with what I've got. Yeah. And that's bad. It is bad. But no. But you course. can find some sort of happiness. And yeah. To be okay with it. But yeah. Obviously, you're searching for more. You're like, okay. Exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Like if if you're talented and you're consistent, and you know you're not an idiot, like and I don't mean an idiot. You've got some talent, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mean an idiot in a stupidity sense. I mean you know being a genuinely savvy person. Yeah. That would be a lot like better. Personality rather than. Yeah. Like cleverness. The biggest thing I learned in this industry was that personality matters more than anything. Yeah. Absolutely anything. So a lot. To be likable. Yeah. To be a likable person, and I think I'm unlikable at times. Like don't get me yeah, wrong, because yeah, like, yeah. I can be a bit of an ass, but. Um, it's like the people, the people who are nice and genuine are the people yeah. that people want to work with. Right. And you know, if if you just if you're an arsehole, even if you're talented, no one's gonna want to book you. No one's because you know that's. You it. might let them down on a night or something if you've got better things to do, mightn't you? Yeah, yeah and it's it's like just you don't want to be around people like that, you know. Like yeah. like there's there's a lot of talented DJs who's coming to the scene, very good, extremely talented, borderline genius, but they just their personalities are awful. Yeah. And they just go. Because they think there's something they're not. So moving on to funny stuff now. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing or funniest thing you've experienced, or a load of things as a DJ? What What are some weird oh things? Oh god. Uh, weird things. Honestly. Um, on the spot here, but you know. Yeah. When I do seasons abroad, I just get up to a lot of weird shit. <laughs> like DJing is a small part of what I do when I when I work <laughs> yeah. abroad. Like in Magaluf, just sh- chill on the beach sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like you know, you're in after parties and it's not funny, but I've had I've had I've had stuff thrown at me, drinks, people. Okay. Put their hands over the decks and turned off the equipment. Like, Serious? Oh yeah, it happened a few times. Some, well, three times it's happened where somebody's put their hand over the box. The funniest thing, which yeah. wasn't funny at the time, right? Okay. Was this summer? <laughs> um, I, oh my days! I didn't. Even, I, I, I feel sick thinking about it. But I was DJing in Magaluf, and we have like where the DJ box is is on like a stage, and we have like a, a railing which comes over. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people throw stuff. Right. And um, you know, yeah, cool. Like we didn't really have any problems with it. But yeah. one night, some guy climbed up on the stage, put his head over the railing, and spilled all over all the computers and equipment. Are you serious? And I didn't even know it happened. I didn't even realise until I smelled. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Until I smelled it. And so I didn't even see him do it. And I was yeah. DJing, I could smell something. I looked up. And I could see like the stage clear. And I was like, okay. And I could just see this guy lying on the, the glass thing we have, the glass railing. Yeah. And sick running down, and, okay. and I saw a look to the left, and then <laughs> there was just all this sick, and oh I was like, God. wow. And the thing is, I couldn't like stop playing, yeah. So I have to just carry on <laughs> DJing with the sick next to me within like. I mean, how many were in there? How many? Did you uh, at the time, there was about three, four hundred people in the club. No, as in like in your booth, like. Oh, it was just me. Just you. But we have to get a cleaner in. Uh, the guy who cleans all the stuff, and he sort of came in. And did well, his... While you were doing the set. Yeah. You gotta be professional. I couldn't just stop the music as much as I wanted to. You know, I didn't want to play anymore after that. Was any of it on your sliders or anything? No, it, did, it wasn't because, awesome. um, like, so the decks were there and all the computers were there. Oh right. So you threw up on the computers, which is bad. Yeah. But didn't touch my decks. But you so. could just continue playing while it was being cleaned. Yeah. It just stunk quite a bit. Just smelled horrible. 
So, okay, so this is quite a deep question now. But, uh, yeah, what have you learnt about yourself while getting here as a DJ producer? What have you learnt about yourself? Um, I, I'd say, you know, what I've learnt about myself is sort of goes back to what we said earlier. It's the fact that I've sort of learned that I'll never be, like, you know, completely satisfied with what I do. In, okay. a, in a good way. So that all applies to different things while well, yeah. DJing, yeah. And, you know, DJing was what taught me that because... Yeah. You know, there was a point where my biggest goal was to get a spot in that nightclub that I did as a kid. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and then when I got there, I was like, oh, well, I'll do something else now. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't realise it, but that was that. And, you know, and now I'm at this stage where I'm not, I'm nowhere near, like, you know, high up, I don't think, or where I should be. Yeah. Um, And I don't, I don't feel like I've accomplished anything more. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I don't, like, you know, I, I don't, like, I, I know, like, I've done cool shit. Yeah. But I don't feel like, you know, I've, I've like... You've done what you can do. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I don't feel like I've done what I can do. Um, okay. And I never will. And I also learned about myself. Uh, well, I've learned yeah. just to tolerate people less. Um, okay. As weird as that sound is... Yeah, in what way? In what way? Right. Just if, somebody's, if somebody fucks you over, don't give them a chance to do it again. Ever. So be more selective of the people yeah. that you trust. Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of people in this industry who are literally in it for themselves, like most yeah. people in the world are. Right. Um, and they will they will try and have you like when you least expect it, and they will yeah. they'll act like your best mate. And then when they get an opportunity, you know, they'll try and take a gig or try yeah. and undercut you or just just try and fuck you, like and yeah, you know, you've just got to see them coming. Right. Okay. So that's not what I've learned about myself. But that's what I've sort of learned to to to, to deal with. Yeah. A bit okay. more. It's like help yourself moving forward, like not. Yeah. Relying on people who you can't rely on, basically. Yeah, but I mean, I've also learned great things, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've also learned that you know, enjoyment comes from hard work, and like you know, there's 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 a lot more to life. Yeah. There's so much more to see out there. You know, yeah. I've learned like. Like di- traveling now. Haven't you? Yeah, you know, like traveling. you know, I've learned different things about different parts of the world. I've met the most amazing people I could ever meet. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. the industry, the nicest people, the greatest people, like genuinely. Yeah. And you know, I've I've learned that people are like. You know, people are nice. Like people, you know, people. There are people out there besides the ones I mentioned earlier. Yeah. They want. They really do want to push you in the best field, and right. they've become family. You yeah. Know, genuinely, I've become family to me. Like I thank them for everything. Yeah. Sweet. But yeah. So in terms of what you plan for the future, do you have in like what is the one? Where can you imagine yourself? Like I'm trying to get here. Like Creamfields, Tomorrowland, Ultra. Do you yeah. Imagine yourself at playing at like them. Uh, I'd like to. I'd love okay. to. Do it. I mean, you know. You don't just say no, are you? Yeah. Who wouldn't? Um, I'm not gonna say like. I, I will do it because right. I don't know. I could stop just producing music tomorrow. Um, get, could like, you? Yeah, no, I couldn't. But <laughs> yeah. It could happen. I could become, I could become deaf or something. So right. I, that's all I can say is I'd like to. And, yeah. and in a few years, I'd like to be you know in a position where you know maybe touring or something yeah. like that. Um, well, I, I want to be an artist and you know pursue that to be done. Uh, but so yeah. open, you've not really got a set. Yeah, I've right. not really got a set thing. You know, I'd like to do uh, this stuff. I'd like to do as yeah. every DJ would, but I'm not like. I'm not thinking oh, I've got to do this. Like so, obsessed you know, with getting there, sort of thing. Yeah, just I think the biggest the biggest thing people need to learn is you know enjoy the journey. Yeah, that's the best part. With, yeah, you know, the best part of being on the mountain is climbing it. Really. Being like on the moment rather than living for two years down the line. Yeah, climbing. you know if you just look ahead, you know you're not you're not learning, you're not enjoying the process. You just yeah you're just driven to this goal and then when you reach it, well okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, so next question is. If I was to hand you, I wish I could do this, but if I was to hand you one million pounds now... I wish too. <laughs> ...to stop DJing and stop everything music related, and do another job, maybe office related or something completely different, not even flying, just something aside from music. Oh, a million pounds. <laughs> a no. million pounds, would you not? God, no. Never, no. No. Why? Because but money is not important at all in that context. Like, so you're not doing it for money? No, no. absolutely not. Like, I'm just doing this for like doing it. I'd rather live a life that I enjoy than... A life where I'm financially stable. Yeah. Because that's not going to make you happy, really. No. I mean, I'd be happy if you give me a million pounds, but <laughs> at that sacrifice, of course not. I, I wouldn't enjoy getting up. You know, I love, I love just sitting here and work at music and being creative and buzzing yeah. off myself. Right. You know, I, I love going to the airfield and flying. Like. Yeah. You know, I, money doesn't buy that. Like, money can't like do that for you. No. You know, in that in the physical sense. Yeah. It can help you do it. Yeah. But it's yeah. a tool, but not as yeah. the final thing. Yeah, it's a tool, yeah. you know. And, like, okay. but yeah, if you want to give me a million, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a nightmare though. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Obviously, as a DJ, uh, club nights tend to be, well, apart from students, which is midweek, tends to be like Friday, Saturday, when people are going out at the same time. Yeah. What's your social life like, in that sense? Um, I've actually taken quite a step back from it now, because, yeah. like, last year, I was DJing 
about five nights a week, five, four to five nights a week. Yeah. And I didn't even see my mates because some of these gigs were in different cities as well. So you had to travel a lot, did you? Yeah, so, you know, it was, it was pretty much two days. You know, I'd leave on the Friday, yeah. do Friday nights, and then I'd be back Saturday night, straight yeah. home, change into another nightclub. My God. Uh, I wouldn't really see my mates. Um, to be honest, like, you know, it's, it's one of them, it's the sacrifice you make. Because you are working on social hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I'm amazed to understand. But, you know, like, as I said, I've taken a step back from it this year because I'm doing a lot more, you know, I'm in the final year of university as well. Yeah, if you're focusing on that as well. Yeah, so I can't I can't be DJing until four in the morning if I'm flying at eight. You know, That's, yeah. it's, it's a very risky thing to do. Um, so I've, I really have to take a step back from it now. So I'm not, I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm still doing nights a lot more than I should be, but yeah. in terms of nights a week. Yeah, but not as much as I was last week, last year, where I was just yeah. I was just deflated. Just hammering it, yeah. Uh, but that's gonna be off topic. Social life is good. Yeah, I still speak to my mates. Yeah. Um, it's just obviously the only difference is like when they're out getting smashed, I'm probably working. Yeah, you're probably on the decks mixing. Yeah, and I mean that's fine. Yeah. You so know, you're happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with it. At, at the end of the at the end of the day, you know, if they, if if they can't be my mates for that reason, then they're not really your mates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's I mean. True. Well, so, so you can always meet up with him after you set something. Or yeah, you know, after that? like last night, like a few of my mates will come to a gig of mine, and then we'll go, we'll go after this because there's clubs and bars in Manchester until ten in the morning, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Uh, so you should just join him after work. Or yeah, anything? yeah. Well, they just come with me, and they'll stand in the DJ box, they'll play in chips, you know, anything, <laughs> anything with the pulse. And then uh, after, you know, we'll go have a few drinks, have a chill, wind down. Well, yeah. Last question now. So people who are watching this are most likely producing young people who are wanting to. Yeah. Yeah, DJ, what three pieces of advice would you give to anyone in that situation, no matter what their age is? What um, piece of, three pieces? It's not really advice, as I say, because I'd be wrong if we talk for advice, but there's a few things I will say. The first thing is what I said earlier. The right. most important number one rule is just don't be a dickhead in this industry. Right. Because, I mean, people who reach the top are not a dickhead, so I, but I can guarantee they will like out of the start. Yeah. Um, if you're an arsehole and you just up and come in, like you'll just step on coming and you'll say an asshole. Yeah. Like you've got to really, you know, you you got to be humble and you can't take things for granted and you you can't piss the wrong people off and you yeah. can't think that anybody owes you anything because nobody owes you anything, you know. Yeah. Um. And when you're in clubs, you know, just just don't just like you know don't take the piss. You're not gonna get booked even if you're the best DJ in the world. A promoter's not gonna want to book you again if you if you act like a bell on the night, you know. Yeah, true that. They're not gonna want to do it like. Like I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't care. So it'd be like polite and nice to everyone. Yeah, I mean, to an extent. it's it's not something I should really have to say, but yeah. in general, if you've got a big ego, then leave it at, leave it at home because yeah. you know, like, I'm, that's not to say to be false, but apart you, from like obviously marketing yourself, like on social media, you've got to yeah. say, look, I've done this. You can't just keep it to yourself because you're humble. Yeah, of course. It's, you yeah. know, yeah, th- yeah. There is a line between being humble and you know, sharing stuff. Yeah. Like I like I'll post stuff on thing, but like. You know, there's there's a lot of DJs and producers out there, and they make out to me, and they not. Yeah. Like I'll openly say I'm not. I'm pretty much a nobody compared to you know right. m- who I want to be, yeah. who I'd like to be. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, there's a lot of people, and they'll get booked for these little slots here and there, and they make out like they're doing you know festivals and stuff. Yeah. And they'll just you know people see through it, man. It's yeah. like they re- they really do, and you know they're the, they're the ones who are just like oh, you know what I mean? You mean the ones who like show off like on Saturday yeah or... just swing the dicks about like genuinely just swing the dicks about just you know make it up like they, they're doing this that, and the other when really they've not really got much going on right but they're just so focused on promoting themselves on social media yeah to make everybody else think and build this false image of success yeah that when you know when when it comes to people who are successful looking at them they're like they can see right through it yeah absolutely the yeah. people the DJs, who, who i know you know do it all the time so there's a quote, fake it till you make it, that's completely wrong in the music industry, isn't it? No, that's the thing, it's not. You know, okay. some DJs, you know, do kind of find success from it, but it's only if you do it right. Right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But there's a, there's a, there's a line. You know, there, there is faking it till you make it. Yeah, yeah. Of course it is. You know, I fake, I fake it. You know, <laughs> I, I fake it all the times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah. But, at the same time, there's faking it, and then there's pretending to be somebody you're not. There's a right. big difference, yeah. you know, from... Taking it like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I've done this, I'm good, you know, da 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 da, yeah. and then being like, yeah, oh, such a hard grind doing a festival, all that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You know, making out like you're a personality and you're a social figure and you're booked for all these things when, when you're not. Because that, that's lying. Yeah. You know, that's, it uh, really, really is lying. And it's, Latent, yeah. Latent and it's is. exaggerating. Right. And that's what all DJs do, you know, they'll get something small and they make it seem massive. Yeah. That's not really faking it as such. 
I wouldn't say as it is, you know, kind of just over exaggerating. <laughs> right, it's a thin line. Okay. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of DJs. I know I'm going on a bit, but there's a lot of no, DJs okay. which have made it purely through promoting themselves and marketing. Yeah. They are DJs. They're not producers. They've got right. people to produce their own shit, whatever. So that goes for you to do them. Yeah, and that, that is fake, isn't it? Yeah. But at the same time, I can guarantee when they were up and coming, they weren't like, you know. They weren't making out like they were in that position which they wanted to be. When they were starting out. Yeah, they're not making out like the Garricks when oh, when yeah. they've got two thousand likes on Facebook. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which they both. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah. all right, second bit of advice, you know, obviously yeah, just don't fake it and be humble, that's the first bit of advice. Yeah. Second bit of advice is yeah, just don't don't do it for any other reason other than the love of music, I'd say. Yeah. Cause Honestly, you know, if you're going into this with that sort of mindset, you know, I just want to be famous. And a lot of people do, especially now more than ever. Exactly. You know, DJs are a big deal now. Yeah, it's just social media, like Instagram and that. Yeah. Like, wow, you know, Jared, Jared, I want that. What, what, when I started, nobody really cared about DJ. I actually got made fun of for producing music in school a lot. Yeah. I got bullied quite a bit for it, yeah. When I was right. starting, yeah. and then a few years online, I think I was teaching some of the buddies how to produce music. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? My God, ironic. But, well, it's just kind of a nice guy. But, um, no, but yeah, like... You know, but now there's you know there's a lot of hype about DJs, a lot of social media, yeah. And people see that and they want that lifestyle. And one, that's not the lifestyle. What no. you what you see on that ten minute second, that is not the lifestyle. <laughs> it's very different and it's a lot darker than people think. Right. But they see it and they want it and then they buy these controllers and they're like, I want to fucking do Tomorrowland and I want to become a techno DJ. All right, cool. Yeah. Like they they don't get anywhere because there's no love. Right. They, there's a superficial desire for, you know, success and gratification. Yeah. There's no love of music. You don't love music. No. You love fame. You love shagging birds and sniffing drugs. Yeah. You know, you're a waste fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. what it is. I, I wouldn't use it. I've never used the term waste fan in my life, but I think that's everything. <laughs> but, you know, do it. Do it because you love music. You love producing music. Don't expect to get anywhere from it because, you know, a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. just produce music and just become so good at producing music that you're in a position where people are wanting okay. that off you. So, do it, but not because obviously people think, oh, what career should I do? Oh, should yeah. I stay at the career, go to university and become an I'd, accountant? Yeah, something? I'd absolutely say have a backup plan. Okay. Like, you know, produce music on the side and become good at it and, and love producing music. Yeah. But don't, like, if. Don't make that, make that be your main income focus. Yeah, of course. You know, on a financial aspect, absolutely. I think if, you, if you're enough to become a DJ who's not got anything. Like nobody knows you and you're not any regular gigs. Yeah. You can't like just devote your life to teaching. <laughs> like do it, do it. You know when you're getting booked, you know five days a week. Yeah. And you, you know you're just balling because it is you can make money from it. Like think we're yeah. wrong, but don't do it if you're just like starting out. You know, because yeah. that's what I did when I was eighteen. That's what I did. I was like, well, you know, I've done this. Uh, just become yeah, yeah. a DJ, and I found myself signing on the door. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. At eighteen, when I got back from no, before I went to Bulgaria. Yeah. Actually. Oh right, see. Because then how, how long were you on that for? Like a few weeks. Oh, like a few weeks, yeah. Okay. But you know, because th- then that's because things started to pick up for me. Oh sweet, yeah. And then I was like, right, well, you know, I, I don't have to work shit jobs anymore. I'm, yeah. I'm getting somewhere. I wasn't right. getting really as far as I thought I was. No. You know, until obviously Bulgaria came about, but that yeah. did that didn't happen then. Right. And then I soon realised, yeah, you know. So, as I said, like I'm like I'm in university, I'm doing other stuff. Yeah. And I'm planning on getting a job when I leave uni. I'm st- that's what I'm thinking. Of. I'm not thinking of doing this full time still. Sweet, okay. So, you know, what, what sort of job? So, at uni now, you do media studies, aren't you? Filming your media studies. Yeah, so yeah. just, it'd probably be something to do with my degree, filmmaking, maybe. Okay. Um, you know, and, or maybe flying. I, I quite like to become a flying instructor. So you've got a lot of different ideas, like, where yeah. are you? Yeah, I mean, it depends, because fly, flying's expensive, that's the only thing. So, oh, getting yeah, get instructor's yeah. license is quite a bit, so, see what happens there. But, yeah, and, um, you know, see what happens there. Cool, and so, that's a, so the first piece of advice is uh, be nice to people. Second bit is uh, do it because you love music, not for the money or fame. Yeah. Third bit of advice, what was it? And the third thing I'd say, just for up on coming DJs, which is yeah. quite important, uh, is don't draw comparisons. Because that's why I did, you know, I was like, wow, this kid's 15. Yeah. When I was like 16, and I was like, he's got, you know, he's got these record deals. Like, I'm shit, like, I'm worthless. Yeah. You know, obviously I was younger then, and, I, and my, my mentality had changed. Yeah. Like, before yeah. I had. And... I just found myself getting irritated by everything and I found myself losing the love of it because I felt like I wasn't doing as good as everybody else. Right. When really, what you don't see is, you know, these guys, we don't know what they're doing, you know, they, they've got a big team behind them. Yeah. They probably don't even produce their own shit. 
Right, yeah. But I didn't see that. I just, I just saw the success and I was like... So you can't see everything that happens behind the scenes, basically? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I was, I was working so hard and I was like, why are these guys getting... You know, why are these guys just smashing it and I'm just not? And I've been producing two years and he did it in one. Yeah. And the thing is, everybody goes at their own pace. Okay. Every producer goes through their own journey and their own love of music. Right. If they love music. Um, so when you, when you draw comparisons, it's, it's quite unhealthy, really. Yeah. Because you sort of... Start you comparing th- your now to someone else's yeah. different time scale. Yeah, exactly that. And, you know, you start to feel bad about yourself and you start to feel like you're not doing things properly and then you start losing the love of music. Yeah. You, you know, you, you start to then just give up. Right. Okay. You know, there's, like, I've been producing music seven years and this producer has been doing it two years, which are miles above me. Yeah. But I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I, you do you, don't you? Yeah, I'll do me. You know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But when it happens, that's when it's meant to happen. And that's something that's, that's got to be learned. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. So you can do your best, just be consistent. And then when it happens, it happens. Don't, yeah. like... I, I suppose the opportunity comes along here, doesn't it? Like, don't say no yeah. to the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. Never say no to an opportunity. Always take what you can. Yeah. And, you know, as I said, that's not to say, you know, oh, just don't try, you know, just... just do a bit here and there and then expect yeah. that eventually that because it won't. You have got to work hard. You, right. you have got to really... But if you're working hard, I suppose if you enjoy it though, it yeah. doesn't feel like hard work. It doesn't feel like you're working nine to five or something. It just doesn't feel like it's like labour. Yeah. It's, it, for example, say now we're flying a plane. Yeah, okay. And we're at okay. 5,000 feet and then we've got to get to 10,000 feet. Right. We don't go, I want to climb and just start stamping our feet and expect the plane to climb. You put the throttle in and yeah. then the plane climbs. This is it. If you sit here and just go... I want my come famous, I'm going to try and do this. I'm just going to happen. If you just put the throttle in, put yeah. the work in, you'll climb. Good analogy, or metaphor. Well, yeah, well, yeah, whatever it is. But <laughs> it's just, you know, it is what we're on, but that's pretty much what it is. You know, yeah. just, you know, don't think, you know, oh, I've got to, yeah, yeah, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Just, just keep working, keep grinding, keep producing music, just love doing it. Yeah. And then, you know, you can't, unless, unless you just store the stash on your computer of tracks, good time you've got to about them. You know, they'll get out there, just, people will cock on Twitter, you know, the internet's a great place for it. Yeah. Just put them on SoundCloud. But don't think, like, if I don't get a million plays, I'm shit. Because that's not causing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I still, like, even today, I still get chats rejected from loads of places. Yeah. You know what I mean? It happens. So, some DJs or producers might be, say, 30 or 40 or something. Or some might be 15. Yeah. You don't know who's watching. But what age, would you say there's anything to do with the age to be in a DJ producer? Oh, no. Absolutely not, man. Um, definitely not. That's a big thing. Yeah. Big deal, because, you know, this... Producers, 15, 14, 13, 12, 10. Yeah. They're incredible. Yeah. You know, and there's, there's producers 20, not 20, 30, 40. <laughs> yeah. You know, they was doing degrees in university on music production, mm. and I was good. Yeah. Age doesn't make, make a difference, you're you. And yeah. if you've got the talent, then you're going to excel. Yeah, I suppose you see people like, you know, uh, Craig Charles, uh, the uh, basically is an actor on Carnage Street. Oh, right, yeah. Robot Wars presenter, you know that guy? I don't watch Corey, but yeah. Okay, I don't either, but I've seen it, you know, yeah. clips. Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, he was at Snowboarding Festival in 2017 when I went. Yeah. And he was, I didn't know he was a DJ. Like, he was a presenter, but yeah, wow. he's DJ. So he yeah. makes his, like, old stuff. And um, so he's changed career completely. So he's, well, you said that's an example of how he's about, I don't know, he's about 40, 50. Mm. And he's DJing. Yeah, it's good. So there's a lot of people who are maybe 35, 40, oh, I'm too old. To oh, there's no age whatsoever, but, you know, no, no one really cares. If your music's good, then it's good. Simple yeah. as it's a track. Yeah. You know, I, if I like a song, like, you know, it's a simple thing. Like, if, if you're coming across a song on YouTube and it's a belter, yeah. you know, you're not going to Google the age of the person who made it and be like, oh, 45, just going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, of course not, it's a good song. Fuck it. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? You know, and yeah, there is a lot of people going into it now, a lot of celebrities which did something else, you now becoming DJs because it's easy yeah. to DJ, it's not hard. And, you know, if they've got the pull and the, the following, yeah. And, Cool. And it's I suppose it's easier for them if they've got a lot of Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a lot of reality stars, you know, yeah. they they've got all this following from the, what they've done and yeah, they become DJs, they get fucked. What if there's someone who's say sat at home now watching YouTube, watching this, and he's fifty year old, he's a bank manager and he really wants to be a DJ. What advice would you give him? Well, <laughs> that's a good question actually, <laughs> yeah. I'd say do it. Um, you know, obviously uh, it's the same thing applies to everybody. You know, don't quit your job if you've not like got anything yeah. to help you. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like you know, because you, regardless of your age or regardless of what you've done, you're still a DJ. Still need to eat, don't you? Yeah, well, of course, yeah. But also, you're still a DJ, which nobody knows. Right. You know, you're just another DJ wanting to get a gig. 
no matter yeah. what age you are, if you're fucking 600, you still, you still another DJ you want to get a gig. Right. Um, and, you know, so, you know, I wouldn't say like, oh, quit your job, yeah, just blow it off, be spontaneous for life's about. No, of course it's bloody not. You know, you do do your job yeah. and then DJ, you know, get yourself some gigs. And then if you're if, if you're lucky enough to be in a position where you can just live from DJing yeah. and do it. Then you quit your job and then you move on to Yeah, because a lot of people romanticise it and they all, you know, give this vision of empowerment and oh, just quit everything and pursue your passion. Yeah. And as much as I'm an advocate for that, you know, because I literally have booked one-way flights and just done what I wanted to do. Yeah. At the same time, it's, it's risky. So I've done that to be fair as well. Yeah, yeah of course. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's great, you know, it pays off. But, you know, when you're talking DJing, which yeah. is a very saturated market. Yeah. You know, it is, you know, it is hard to find work because everyone's doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, That's true. You know, don't... But it's still possible though, isn't it, even though it's saturated? Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, definitely. I mean, you know, and that's, why, that's what it all comes down to, just, you know, being a likeable person. And being unique, I suppose. Yeah. It? I mean, but to be fair, like, you know, like, it's not like promoters, like, banging my door down to book me. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I get bookings here yeah. and there, like, but I'm not, like, you know, as I said, I'm not, like, in demand. I wouldn't say yes. Okay. I just, I just, I'm just lucky enough to have a few gigs. Sweet. You know. Which is which is fucking brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all I want really. I, I, just, I just like DJing. I'm happy. You know, Decent. DJing in five hours. Yeah, sweet. So, what's the best club that you've been to so far? To, I'll wrap it up for short, don't worry. So oh no, it's right. You can as long as you want. What's the best club that you've been to so far to DJ in? Like, or the best venue to DJ in? Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, Boomerangs in Magaluf. Yeah. Is my home. Right. Like sort of thing. After last season, I just felt like I lived there seven nights a week. Working the yeah, seven like, nights a week. Yeah, you don't get your days off. So 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 what what if you're ill, do you have to like have you ever been ill when you've been Oh ill? yeah, if you're ill obviously you'll get covered. Like if you're not like dictators. <laughs> so, I mean, or yeah. even if I just said to my boss, like I just don't feel like I wanna to work tonight. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't, I don't feel up to it, I wouldn't do a good job, I'm sure there'd be some sort of you know, there's always cover going. But you uh wouldn't be paid for that night, for example. Yeah, yeah, of course not, yeah, you know, as it is for the job. <laughs> um but yeah, you know, like well it's like six days I don't know. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, so Boomerangs is like my home. I love the place to bits. Okay. Um, but you know, in terms of clubs, I just have enjoyed DJing. The O2 Ritz was incredible. Oh, in cool. Manchester, Victoria Warehouse, Manchester was off the wall. Um, the Manchester Academy. Yeah. I love that. Uh, I really, really love that. So, have you met a lot of famous DJs at the moment who the audience might know? Yeah, know yeah, yeah. Of course, loads. So um, I know Oliver Heldens is one guy. Yeah, I met Oliver Heldens, cool guy. Uh, there's a big list on my phone. DJs that I've met, bloody old Tom Zanetti, uh, Cocaine, Majestic, Entrance, Marvin Humes, um, DJ Ronick, he's a really cool guy. The Stickmen, DJ them quite a bit. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, they're actually really good mates of mine um, from Wales, they're really, really nice guys. Um, Have you met Don Diablo? I've not met Don Diablo, he's a cool guy though. Is he? I think he's a really cool guy, yeah. Um, I met, obviously I worked with Jack Shizzle every Friday in Leeds. Yeah. Um, and PBH, I've known him for quite a while. Actually, PBH, I. He did um project, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he was he's, he's on Hexagon quite a bit. They're on Hexagon. Oh, PBH and Jack on on his label on his yeah. yeah. Um and yeah, so I know PBH from Magaluf. Um and yeah, he's he's again both really top guys like awesome, uh, awesome geezers. Um yeah, who else like, uh, what are all the albums on one person, but um yeah. Uh, Julian Jordan, he was cool. Oh yeah, he did a TED talk, didn't he? On um, he's on spinning now, Sand Spinning, isn't he? Yeah, well, he was one of the first guys who made a track with Garrix. Uh, oh, right. We made BFAM in two thousand. Both Charlie. Both Dutch, yeah. He's a yeah, he's a sound guy, man, for sort of top geezer. Uh, Have you ever produced with him? Julian Jordan? Yeah. Oh, no. No. Oh, I mean, <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's like proper famous man. Yeah. Uh, I. Probably would one day, <laughs> like to. But yeah, no. When I saw him, he was just in Bulgaria. Yeah. And um, he was doing a gig in, you know, uh, Sunny Beach, and I just got chatting to him after. Oh, so oh, so he just was he on next to you, or what was no? Yeah. Like, how did you? Uh, no, it was it was it was under the same company. Yeah. But I wasn't DJing that day. It was it was a daytime party. Oh, so you were, okay. Uh, but I just came down to like his music, obviously, and then I yeah. just got chatting to him. Oh, right. Um, and yeah, like I'm not I'm not producing any massive DJs really. Who's the biggest DJ that you produce with? Um, I don't, I, I don't produce with DJs. Honestly, yeah. I, I've not really done much with it um, because I don't know. I just, it's a bit weird. I've, I've tried, I've tried in the past producing with other DJs. Yeah. And I just can never like, we can never get a pro, a track out. 
But, yeah. you know, just because something happens or, you know, it just never materialises. That's not to say, you know, it's a permanent thing. It's just I've never been able yeah. to finish a track just because things have come up. Um, I mean, like due to your schedule sort of thing, like not being free to do it. Yeah, it's not, not that. It's just we work on it and, you know, it, it's happened every time we've tried really. We, you know, we work on it, we'll get really into it and then we'll start tweaking it and then eventually we'll start working on our projects and we've forgotten. Oh, I see right. Um, yeah. But I mean, I, one producer I've worked with quite a lot is Wayne Miles, okay. um, and he's very good. He's yeah. but he's gone miles, like you know, in the yeah, for, for last year he was like there, and now he's like fucking up there, like. Oh my God. Uh, he's really good. Yeah. Um, and I work I work a lot with him. Actually, we we worked together on a track. Yeah. Um, which should be coming out. Uh, and yeah, uh, but as I said, I don't I don't usually it's rare for me to sit in the studio with a producer. Yeah. Work on a track cause I just so you prefer working on, on your own in your own headspace, I think. Yeah, I mean, if a producer was to like send me some stems over, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll bounce with that. That's sick, and mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind if they sat in the studio on me, but I've got such a particular way of doing it. I don't, I wouldn't like. You I don't feel comfortable in like you, or like you wouldn't feel efficient in sort of. Work I, d- I, d- I, d- I don't know how I'd feel because I've never really done it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But because I've because because I've got my way of doing it, I, I, you know, I don't know how I would do it. Right. Another producer, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I suppose if you were to do it, you'd want them to send over files rather than them be with you at the time. So you wouldn't want to do it like simultaneously. You want to do it like oh, pass yeah. it while I'm working it and pass uh, it send it over if yeah. they like it. You know, tweak it, tweak it. Like I like sitting in the studio with producers, but yeah. I've just not got the ability to like not talk and get distracted and then like so, socialize while you're doing it. Basically, you can't. Yeah, yeah, and then I just end up taking over, or you know, something happens, and then I'm just like, like, right, well, so. I mean, it's alright. Like, like I've done it a few times, and it's been fun to be fair. It's just, yeah. But nothing, not much gets done, like. Okay. Yeah. So, not, much, not as much as it could be. So, who would you want to produce with? Ah, oh, Sam Shaw. Sam Shaw. Sure. Sam Shaw, sure, uh, Darling Bliss. I think it's his name. Sam Shaw. Sure. Uh, he's not. Um, he's not as well known over here, but he's just incredible at producing, man. He's he's yeah. great. Like he's um. How old is he? I think he's 20, 22? Okay. I think he's 22. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm 21, but yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he makes, you know, sort of minimal techno, um, but with a sort of uh, exoticism influence, which is, I've never really heard music like it before. Yeah. I love, I love his tracks. It's probably unique then. Yeah. Um, also, Township Rebellion. I like their stuff as well. Again. Yeah, who's that again? Township. Township Rebellion. Okay, cool. I'd love to make some with them because it's on the same, same spectrum as Township Rebellion. Yeah. Really. Um, you know, <coughs> I mean, other, other producers, you know, like Tech Rose Biscuits. <coughs> Biscuits. That's okay. his name, Biscuits. He's wow. just sick. And he's, he's a DJ as well? Yeah, he does. Okay, right. He made On the Floor. He's just on a track with Sonny Fedora. Um, you know, there's a lot, you know, low step at Fisher, I don't know Fisher. Oh yeah, Fisher, yeah. I just want to be our own Fisher, he's just a bloody cool <laughs> guy. Do you know what I mean? I just think I'd have a laugh with him. Yeah. Cool, so yeah, thanks for coming on the show anyway. Oh yeah, it's fine, thanks for having me, it's sick. No worries, yeah, it's just good to get an insight to other people who are going to want to go in your uh, position. So yeah, so we've got three pieces of advice, we've got that there. So yeah, super, thanks for your time, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll have you back to, for more stuff, our mini ideas. Okay. Sick. So uh, yeah, cool. Alright, sorted. How's it going? It's, um,